snow. It could be nature's most curious riddle. A dream answered for some, a nightmare relived for others. It can cover the countryside with a soft blanket of serenity, or blow with a blind fury that cripples commerce and industry. A riddle containing both power and beauty. Some anticipate an approaching snowstorm with the same fervor as Santa Claus or Christmas Eve, traveling long distances at great expense to play in the snow. For all those who flock to it, you find just as large a population who run from it, seeking shelter down south. Snow removal replaces snow making. Urban areas spend hundreds of millions of dollars removing snow from site. Cities spread on streets 8 million tons of salt at a cost of more than 250 million dollars. Snow has the potential to nurture and destroy. In much of the Mountain West, 60 to 75 percent of annual precipitation falls in the form of snow. But snow can also flood fields and cut crop yields, collapse roofs, and tear down trees. It can ground air travel and send the morning commute into a spin. The negative power combined with the innocent beauty makes the job of the weather observer invaluable and challenging. We measure snow to describe it and compare, study, and prepare for it. Consistent time of observation, consistent measurement practice on your snowboard is absolutely vital in order to get a, an accurate and precise information on how much snow has fallen and how much snow is sitting on the ground. So for climatologic purposes, we can understand the climatology of snow, and in terms of climate change, we can understand the variability of snow through time. The importance of accurate and consistent measurement of snow cannot be overstated. Information gathered helps to compare one location to another for a particular storm, for a winter, and for long-term differences in average snowfall. It's also used to track long-term, year-to-year, and decade-to-decade -decade changes. Observers gather information on precipitation, new snow accumulation, and total depth of new and old snow and ice on the ground. Precipitation includes the water content of the snowfall, plus any other moisture that fell in the previous day from rain, freezing rain, ice pellets, or hail. Snowfall is defined as the accumulation of fresh snow since the last observation. Snow must be measured on a snowboard or appropriate surface, such as a backyard picnic table, as long as there is little drifting. Snow depth is the total accumulation of both old and new snow and ice measured on the ground. Now, one of the essential ingredients in taking good snow measurements is finding a good representative location to take those measurements. And one of the best times to think about that is before it snows. And so we're in a typical backyard here, and we're going to look at some of the issues that, that you need to deal with in terms of finding a good place for your, for your measurements. You've got a snowboard here, which is a key ingredient for, for getting a good start for snow measurements. And we're on a deck. One of the most common places that people like to measure snow is right out their backyard, and a deck is a very convenient place, but there's a reason why we don't recommend it. And if you look here, what's close to the deck is the house. And here we're looking at a two-story house. Typically in snow, you're either going to get more accumulation if the wind's coming from this direction, it's going to sweep down along the side of the house, and you're going to get more accumulation here on the deck, or if the wind's from another direction, it's going to blow off the roof down here on the deck, and we're invariably going to have more accumulation here than actually fell. So this isn't where we want to do our measurements. We are going to look at the critical issues that we have to deal with, which are typically obstacles, convenience, because we do want to be able to get to our measurement site quickly, and we want it to be somewhere where there's not a lot of traffic in the backyard, but where it's a convenient access but not obstructed. Also want a level exposure, as level and horizontal as possible, and then we've got a good start. Well, I think I've spotted a good location in this yard. Our obstacle here is the fence, about six feet tall. We'd like to be 10 or 12 feet away from that, but still be as far away from the house as we can and from our big obstacle over here. The tree looks like this is a good distance. We're going to call it right here. We're not too far from the door, not in a traffic pattern, nice level grass, 
good open exposure, this is going to be the site for measurements here. The tools for measurement